Um, this is what we're going to make today is this particular tag right here. And we're going to do it entirely from scratch. We're going to make everything on our own. We're not, we're not even going to trace over it. We're just going to kind of make our own style of it, which will be kind of fun. Goodies for goodies. everybody to my tutorial for how to make this tag. Um, we're gonna start out with some, just make it really easy. It'll use basic shapes. We won't do anything too crazy and I think anybody no matter what level you are can definitely make this. So the way we are gonna start out, we're not necessarily going to, to, to draw over it. What we'll do is we'll start off with just a rectangle tool. So on the left hand side you can either click M or click the rectangle tool and we'll just click and drag. And so next what we're going to need to do is add a couple points here. So you'll notice on this tag, here's our reference picture. Um, it goes out, but there's, there's one, two, three, four points. So all we have to do is add a point here and add a point here using this pen tool. So if you want to add a point, you can also go directly to the add anchor point section and click them. It doesn't matter where they are, just click them down. Don't worry about them being even yet because we're going to fix that right away. So now we are going to use this direct selection tool up here. You can also use it by hitting A as a shortcut. And we're only going to highlight all of these so they're they're red for me, but depending on your layer color, they might be different. So as long as they're full, so see how this one is kind of empty right here? And these ones are full. That means the full ones are selected. So we have these selected and we're going to go up to this section up here and say align to selection. What that does is instead of aligning it to the artboard, which is this little square that we're in, it'll align to all of the points I have selected itself. So then what we can do is go to this one and hit the vertical distribute center. So pay attention to what these lines down here are going to be doing. See how they evened out? That makes it really nice. But you'll notice that this line is further apart than these lines, and that's a really easy solution. So what we'll do is we'll use the direct selection tool again take this point, hit the up arrow. Take this point down here, hit the down arrow. And that spaces them out really, really nicely. So now, if we look at this, we're gonna select only these two points and go to the left, one, two, three. And now we have this beautiful shape here that kind of represents this right here, which works really, really well. Magic! I also want to point out I am using a mouse and keyboard for this. I am not using any fancy tablets. This is very, very beginner friendly. So the next step is to make these little wavy lines here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight peaks. So it starts off on the, the valleys and the other one is a peak. So there's actually a really easy way to make this. So what we're going to do is just make a line. And to make it easier to see, I'll use the stroke, but you don't have to do that because we're going to switch it anyway. So we're going to make a line and hold shift. So click, hold shift, it'll keep it straight. See how it kind of keeps it on these points right here? So we will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen lines total or points total. And the reason why we're gonna do sixteen is because there's eight peaks and eight valleys. So we wanna keep that in mind. Before we adjust everything, we're gonna make it so it lines up and is at the same width as this. So see how like this line is from this side to that side? So now let's move it up. And we will select all the points on the inside. If you try to select all the points in entirely, you all of a sudden won't get that little menu that's up here. So we want to select only the inside points here. And what that'll do is we can now hit this horizontal distribution 
and it'll space them out evenly this way. And you're like, okay, that's cool, but couldn't I just couldn't I just use the pen tool and make my own peaks and valleys? Yes, but I always find that sometimes it won't be even and you will get these awkward waves, whereas these ones are really, really symmetrical. So we want to keep that symmetry there. So now what we will do is start on the inside and select every other one. So we'll select the inside one just on the inside, then the next one, hold down shift. That'll allow you to select more than one. Three. And we actually might need to add an extra point here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only have seven, so let's add an extra point. To add an extra point, we'll just click on the old point and then click a new point again. Then go back to the direct selection tool, select all the inside because then we have to make sure that they're even now and bring it down, make sure it aligns, move the cat <laughs> and we will scale it back to fit right along there. So back in action, we're going to use the direct selection tool again and use just these inside ones and space them out. Beautiful. So select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have the eight selected. All right, so we have our eight selections uh, points selected. So we're going to go up just one, one click. Um, for reference, my frame, my artboard is four inches by four inches or four inches by three inches, I think. So you're like, that's great and all, Kuri, but now it's a zigzag and I really wanted like the, the soft curve. So we're going to select these and it won't show if you have them all selected. So let's start with the first ones. So we'll use these top ones right here and go up to the top left and you'll see this convert selected anchor points to smooth. Just click on that. And now you have like these kind of cute, almost stamp like ridges. So let's go down to this bottom one, select these bottoms and do the same thing. So we have this nice little like wiggly line here, except these ones look a little bit awkward. So we're just going to delete those ones entirely like that. Um, they're still a little steep. So a way to just resolve this is just to scale it and flatten it down a little bit. And now we have this nice little wave here. See that? How's that? If you're like, but Kuri, it's supposed to end on a lower one. And this one doesn't end on a lower one. That was my mistake, so we'll just copy it over, and then we will take this one, delete it, and we will align these two up like that. You can select two points as long as they're on top of each other, and join them together like that. But Kuri! <laughs> and then we will do the same, so take these, two, these three points, copy, paste, grab it. You'll see that this one grabbed that line, so we'll delete this. Move it on top. So it hits, see, see how it says intersect? And we want them to both intersect together. And if you notice that your, your pixel, like it's snapping in a way, uh, to fix that, you just go to view and s remove snap to pixel. There we go. And then grab, join. And now we have the right amount of curves. We'll just delete this one right here. Perfect. So again, if you decide, you know what, I don't like how wide this is, this is going to be a really, really fun trick to do. So we got, we have our two shapes here. So we're going to take these and duplicate it across. So the way I, you can either do control C, control V and move it over, or alternatively, you can hold down alt and click after having both of them. So we actually have both here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it really easy for myself. And instead of trying to like recreate the shape that I already have, I'm going to select both of these shapes, go into this right here and go to the pathfinder and hit divide. And what that should do, what that should do is you hit control shift G to ungroup them and you should be able to just delete the top right there. Isn't that nifty? So now we have this bottom shape. And you'll notice that there's like this kind of border around where the horizons is. So let's copy this color using the color pick tool. So we'll just hit I and click on that. And we'll take these two and we will align them to center. And then put it on top. But now all we have to do is just scale it down a little bit. 
The thing you want to keep in mind is because it's not a perfect square, it's a rectangle, it's not going to scale evenly on every side. What's going to happen is this right here is going to be a bit um, closer than on the right and left. So you'll have to just manually move that. The problem with manually moving that is all of a sudden you get kind of this uh, unevenness right here. It's a little uneven. So what we want to do is just scooch it up. You don't want to scale it. You want to just scooch it just like that. And then maybe, maybe we can take these and move them if we really wanted to. But I think this is pretty good. Maybe scooch it. Boop. And it, it's so small. And then we'll scale it up this way. Like that. Beautiful. So now we have this little horizons thing. If we want to add the little hole in here, there's a few ways we can do that. But we'll do it the easy way. Where we will just take this. We will go and center it to the artboard. And put it right here. So we grouped this piece and this piece together and this piece is separately. So you hold down shift and select both of these. Divide it again. And we will just delete this little hole right there. And now this is actually see-through. So you can actually look through it if you really wanted to. Alternatively, if you didn't want it to be see-through, you could just um, put the hole there and have it match whatever your background color is. So you could just have a white circle on there if you really wanted to as well. Just an idea if you're interested. So next we want to add the little islands here and these are super easy to make. So the way we're going to make them is just by making a circle like this and we will color pick by hitting I. So click the I button or hit this eyedropper over here and just click that green and we will take our direct selection tool, use these two points and just drag them down like that. So now you kind of get this like almost egg shape. What we're gonna do is it's still a little bit more pointy than I probably would like it to be. So I'm gonna select this top one and hold, pull this handle out just a smidge on both sides, just like that. So now we have this really cute shape and we will put it right about here. I'd say it's on the fourth little wiggly so here's the fourth one, so it starts right here. But you'll notice, Bakuri, the island is in front of the water. That's okay, it's an easy fix. So we're gonna go over to our layers over here, click this drop down, and you can either click and drag this down. The problem is these two are still grouped together. So we wanna ungroup these. You can select them and hit Control Shift G. Remember, Control G is how to um, how to group them. Control shift G is ungroup them. Alternatively, if you don't remember that shortcut, what you can do is go over to these layers and pick these two and just drag them out of that group layer and that ungroups them as well. So the way to move this back is either by clicking and dragging it down so it's behind or alternatively you can hit control left bracket twice and it'll push it to the back. You'll notice on this side, depending on the brackets you use, it'll either put it to the top or put it to the bottom. So you can kind of use that as a reference point. All right, so now we have our little island here. And so what we're gonna do is copy and paste this one. So you can either do control C, control V to copy and paste it and just drag it where you want. Alternatively, another way to do it is again, hold down alt and shift and just drag it over. Um, this one will be a little bit lower. So we're gonna put it right here. Um, but I think it also would benefit because it's on the side to be a little bit wider. So we're just going to stretch it out like that. So we have like this cute little, little lumpy thing here. This one is a little bit narrow too. So we're going to stretch this one out a little bit more too, just like that. And they're still a little bit high up. So let's bring these two down a little bit more and you can adjust it however you want. It doesn't necessarily have to match perfectly. If you wanted to add an extra island or an extra couple islands, completely okay. So the fun part is this little palm tree and we don't necessarily have to have it exactly the same as this palm tree. Let's make our own. So we're gonna start out using this as a reference and just make a little square right here like that. Boop. So that'll be the stem of the palm tree. Um, if you don't know how to use the pen tool, this is a really good opportunity to try to like learn it a little bit. So what we will do is we will start in the center here and we will click just for a hard point 
and then click and drag to make this kind of curve. This is a nice curve right here. And we'll put a little point right here. And then we'll just go straight, click and drag for the curve. Click, click and drag, click and click together. So now we have this little palm tree leaf, but it looks a little awkward. The beautiful thing about Illustrator is that you can go back and you can adjust any of these points however you want. So let's say I wanted this leaf to be a little bit longer and make this a little bit more rounded. And that already looks a million times better. Let's just adjust this right here, just like that. And then we can also click and try to make it more like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, so when you're creating your shapes, don't stress about trying to make it perfect right away. It is completely normal in Illustrator to go back and readjust all of the points you've already done multiple times. Um, I do wish I had a curve right here. So the way we're going to add a curve, let's click on this right here and we're going to hit this button up here that says convert to smooth. But now it kind of looks like a mitten and you want to move the handles, but they move in very slowly. So if you hold down alt and then click and drag, it should move one handle at a time which is pretty helpful. So we want to, it's called breaking the handle. You want to break the handle a little bit like that. And then we will grab this point up here and kind of just move this one down a little bit like that. And that's a pretty cute shape. I think that one works really, really well. So I, I do want to try to scooch these in a little bit more and we'll just make a few more adjustments and then I promise we'll get to the other leaves. We definitely want to make this a little bit flatter like that. That's pretty cute. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe just, and again, Illustrator is all about tweaking a million times over. So um, we'll do the same thing. So, so here's a little cheat, right? You don't have to tell anybody about your little cheats, your cheat codes, um, but this is a very helpful. When you have a pattern that has different shapes kind of like this that are already kind of existing, um, one thing you can do is just kind of copy them over, right? It makes it a little bit easier, a little less stressful. So what we'll do, and I might just scooch these up a little bit more, boop, making a few more adjustments as I go to make it more of a shape I like, is just we're going to duplicate this. So we're going to select it and use this nifty tool right here. See how it says rotate tool? If you hold, click and hold it down, you can go to the reflect tool. You can also hit O if you want to reflect it. So we are going to pick the middle-ish area of here and see how there's like a little blue line right here? That means that's where it's gonna reflect to. So now we're gonna hold down Alt again because that's how you duplicate and just click and drag it like that. And now we have a cute little shape here, but this one is a little bit smaller so we'll just hold shift and scale it down just a smidge and we can do that a few more times so let's do that again well we will go to rotate now because we're going to use the same one so hold click and hold switch to rotate tool put it in the middle hold shift or alt i mean rather and click it up but you're like but kuri it's overlapping and it doesn't really look good that's okay we're just gonna scale it and kind of squash and stretch it how we want. And we're gonna add a little center area here as well to kind of fill it out. Don't worry about logistics of it being empty right here. <laughs> but Kuri. So we're gonna scooch this one up a little bit too. Give ourselves a little bit more room as well. So you can kind of tweak the leaves as much as you want afterward too. So we'll stretch that out. And now we have a nice little little thing here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab this one, use the rotate tool, select the center, hold alt and lift. And now we can readjust it and we'll squish it down a little bit, rotate it where we want it to be. I think that's pretty cute. And now we need one more on top. So we'll just grab this little boy and again, rotate tool. Hold shift, or hold alt, alt rather, sorry. And we'll make him real small. So now we have kind of a general shape of the palm tree we want, um, which is pretty cute. It's not attached to anything, but that's fine. So we'll just click and drag these up to kind of fill in right here. And here is where you can just make a select the circle tool, 
hold alt and shift and fill it out if you really wanted to. But you're like, mm, it doesn't quite look right. This is just going to be our guideline of where we want the leaves to be attaching. So on each leaf, we have this point here that doesn't really look like it does much of anything. We're just going to click and drag this point that we had left and then kind of have them overlap where they're attaching like that. So you have this one right here. And if you don't like how big the circle is, you can always scooch it in a little bit. Grab this one, bring it here. Grab this one, bring it over here like that. And basically you just kind of want them to be attached where it looks natural. Just like that. And now we have a really cute little palm tree. I don't really like how low the, they look a little too droopy. So all you have to do is just rotate it and pop it back up. You can always make adjustments afterward. Anything you create is an end all be all. You can always go back and adjust whatever you want. So if I wanted this to be higher, but didn't like the way this is attached, we can just scooch this up like that. But I think that looks pretty cute. From far away, you can definitely tell it's a palm tree. So now what we'll do is see how there's so many different shapes. If I try to click and drag, there's two ways to do this. You can either group it together by hitting control G like that. And now whenever I click and drag it, but you notice there's a lot of shapes and a lot of needless like nonsense. You can always use the Pathfinder tool and just use this Unite tool. And that makes it one shape instead of a bunch of shapes. The only thing I do want to suggest is always make a copy of your original version and then Pathfind it. That way, if you decide you don't like this shape, rather than trying to go and adjust every little point, you can always go back and adjust it the easier way where it's broken up. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to use the Pathfinder tool. The Pathfinder tool in merging is amazing, but definitely, definitely keep a version that has all of your stuff. And anything outside of your artboard isn't going to show up when you save as well. So we have our little palm tree and we're just going to bring it on over here and we'll just stick it right here. And because it's the same color, it kind of matches really nicely. Look at that. Isn't that cute? So now last but not least is we want to add the text. But let's say we don't want it to say New Horizons. What if we want it to say, I'm going to say, let's have it say my, my town name, right? And this is where you can customize it however you want. So my town name is always Blue Cat. It's just the name of my guilds whenever I have a game, the name of my towns, my name of my farms, whatever game I'm playing. So the, the font we're going to use, it's not exactly the font, but we're just going to use Arial because it's pretty close to the New Horizons font. Um, again, this is something you can customize completely however you want. You can make it your own, but we're going to we're gonna also duplicate this. So let's take this font and... The problem is when you try to scale an illustrator, sometimes instead of going and having to change the font size every time, a little trick is to go to type, convert to point type, and now it's this type of box that you can scale however you want. I like using that more than just changing the font size, but that's just me personally. So instead of saying New Horizons, I'm going to say Welcome to... And we'll make this one a lot smaller. Scale it down and have it right here. And I want this to kind of match the tag style. So what I'll do is I'll use my eyedropper tool and just click this color. And now we have that nice color right there. Welcome to. And it's pretty clean. I'll line it up right where I want it. It's about here. And then blue cat. So the interesting thing about New Horizons is they have this really cool shapes with their with their letters so we can replicate that if we want to or alternatively to make it a little bit easier and be a little bit lazier um is just alternate the colors so let's make a little color palette i'm just going to make three little circles here two three and we will color pick each color so there's the lighter blue the darker blue oop, right there and like a cyan -y blue right there. So those are the three blue colors we'll be using right here. Let's make it easy for ourselves. Let's just change it so there's multiple colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into type, 
create outlines. And now instead of text, which kind of looks like this solid thing, we have shapes for each letter, which is really helpful. And then again, because it grouped it, you'll see in the layers panel how there's a group here. We'll click and drag all of these out. Alternatively, you can hit Control alt g and that will ungroup them. Now we can select each letter individually. So I'm going to select this B and I'm going to color pick this one. And then I will select this L and we'll take the lighter color. And then we will select the U and do the darker color. This is in no pattern or order in the tag, so we're just going to do it however we feel like it. This one will do this this other blue, and then we'll select the C. I like the capital letters being dark. I feel like because they're darker, they stand out more. Select this one, do the light blue, and select this one and do that blue. And now we have this really cute little tag here. So um, what I'm going to do is now change my artboard size to fit it just right here like that. And when we save this out, we want to export it as a PNG with transparency, and then you'll have a nice little tag. So let's do that really quickly. I'm also going to add the hole or add a ribbon for fun. Let's add a little ribbon. How about that? So I want a little ribbon. What I'm going to use is a paintbrush tool, and I click on the paintbrush tool. We'll change it to, to three-point round, and we will go a little line like that, and another little line like this. And we'll add a little loop. Let's add a little loop here. So we'll add a little loop and then another tag like that. But you'll be like, but Kuri, the tag doesn't go behind the loop. Well, this is a very easy fix. We will select this line. When we select this thingy and put it in the very back layer, it kind of goes through the loop just like that. Isn't that cute? So let's do file, export, as and we will just save it wherever let's just save it to the desktop Boop. so you want to make sure it's transparent but you'll notice uh oh it didn't save the artboard what that happened was when i hit file export export as i didn't check off use artboards make sure you check off use artboards there we go and now if we were to open this let's see how it looks there we go isn't that cute super cute. You can also look at it by dragging it in and seeing. And that's how you make a little uh, tag for New Horizons. So thank you guys for listening and hanging out while we did this little project. One thing I like to do when I make things like this is think about how I would want to use them for fun. I am making some panels that are based off of this. So like about me, schedule, donate, Notice that some have mountains, some have buildings, you could put desert, you can change it. You could change the colors to whatever you wanted if you wanted it to be more of, um, if you wanted it to be more of a sunset, you could change this to like a peach color just by going in here and adjusting it to peach. So you can do all sorts of different things to it however you want and that's what's really fun about creating your own assets is you can kind of customize them to be however you want. But if you want a link to all of these New Horizon panels for either your Twitch or your Mixer account or wherever you want to put it, um, the link will be in the description below as well as linked on my website or on Twitter. You can find them pretty much anywhere. But thanks, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you on the next video. Bye!